Well, welcome back to our class, Algorithms and Data Structures. In our last lecture, we went ahead and talked about hashing. And so that was a general introduction. And this next lecture, what we'll do is we'll be focusing on hashing as a dictionary implementation. So let's just go ahead and get right into that. And so um, here is the table of contents of what we'll be talking about. And so we'll be talking about the efficiency of hashing, the concept of rehashing, comparing schemes for collision resolutions. And then we'll get into a dictionary implementation that uses hashing and um, follow up with the, the different data, the Java um, class libraries, the hash map and the hash set that will be useful. So this chapter describes hashing as a technique for implementing a dictionary when searching is the primary task. We now study hashing's performance and examine the, the details of its implementation in Java. Since Java is the, the language that we're using to help us understand these algorithms, that's what we'll be focusing on. For the efficiency of hashing, as, as we saw in the previous chapter, implementation of an ADT dictionary depends on whether the dictionary requires distinct search keys. In this section, we consider only dictionaries with distinct search keys. Recall that the add method for such a dictionary must ensure that duplicate search keys do not occur. Each of the dictionary operations get value remove and add searches the hash table for a given search key. The success or failure of a search for a given key directly affects the success or failure of the retrieval and removal operations. The successful addition of a new entry occurs after a search for a given key, key fails. <clears throat> an unsuccessful addition replaces the value of an existing entry instead of adding a new entry. This operation occurs after a successful search for a given key. Thus, we have the following observations about the time efficiency of these operations. A successful retrieval removal has the same efficiency as a successful search. An unsuccessful retrieval or removal has the same efficiency as an unsuccessful search. A successful addition has the same efficiency as an unsuccessful search and an unsuccessful, unsuccessful addition has the same efficiency as a successful search. So it is sufficient to analyze the time efficiency of the searching the, the hash table for a given, key, a given search key. So let's talk about the load factor. We begin our discussion of hashing in the previous chapter with a, a perfect hash function that causes no collisions. If you can find a perfect hash function for your particular set of keys, using it to implement the AD um, dictionary will provide operations that are each big O notation one. Such an implementation is ideal. The good news is that, is that finding your perfect hash function is quite feasible in certain situations. Unfortunately, using a perfect hash function is not always possible or practical. In those situations, collisions are likely to occur. Resolving a collision takes time and thus causes the dictionary operation to be slower than our big O notation one operation. As a hash table fills, collisions occurs more often, decreasing performance even further. Since collision resolution takes considerable more time than evaluating the hash function, it is the prime contributor to the cost of hashing. To help us express that this cost, we define a measure of how full a ta hash table is. The, the, the measure of the load factor lambda is the ratio of the size of the dictionary to the size of the hash table. And you can see this uh, equation here on the chart. Notice that y is a is zero when the dictionary and hence the, the hash table is empty. The maximum value of lambda depends on the type of collision resolution you use. For open address schemes, lambda's maximum value is one when the hash table is full. In that case, each entry in the dictionary uses one element in the hash table. Notice that the, the number of elements in the available state does not affect lambda. For separate chaining, that the number of entries in the, the dictionary can exceed the, the size of the hash table, so lambda has no maximum value. 
let's talk about the, the cost of open addressing. Recall that all open addressing schemes use one element of the hash table per entry in the dictionary. The dictionary operations get value, remove, and add each require a search of the probe sequence indicated by both the search key and the collision resolution scheme, scheme in effect. Analyzing the efficiency of these searches is sufficient. For each open addressing scheme that we considered earlier, we will state the number of comparisons necessary to, to locate a search key in the hash table. We'll express these numbers in terms of the load factor lambda. The, the derivation is the, of these numbers are messy at best, and in some cases difficult, so we won't talk about them here. Interpreting the results, however, is straightforward. Recall from that the open addressing lambda ranges from zero when the table is empty to one when it is full. Well, let's get into linear probing. Um, when you use linear probing, more collisions will likely occur as the hashing table fills. After a collision, you search a, a probe sequence that forms a cluster. If you add a new entry, the cluster grows in size. So we'd expect the probe sequence to grow and therefore require longer search times. In fact, the average number of co comparisons needed to, to search the probe sequence for a given search sequence is um, listed here. We, we have um, the, the equations for a, an unsuccessful and a successful search. After evaluating these expressions for a few values of lambda, we get the results in figure 23.1 in the table. As lambda increases, that is, as the hash table fills, the number of comparisons for these searches increases. This result satisfies our initial intuition. For example, when the hash table is half full, that is when lambda is 0.5, and at an average unsuccessful search requires about, point, uh, about 2.5 comparisons, and an average successful search requires about 1.5 comparisons. As lambda increases between 0.5, the beyond 0.5, the number of comparisons for an unsuccessful search increases much more rapidly than for a successful search. Thus, the performance degrades rapidly when the hash table is more than half full. Should this happen, you need to define a larger hash table, as we described, uh, as we described a little bit later in the in the chapter in the section rehashing. So what about quadratic probing and doubling um, ha and double hashing? Secondary clusters as a result of quadratic probing is not as serious as the primary clustering that occurs when you use linear probing. Pro probing. Here, the average number of comparisons needed to search a probe sequence for the given key is shown in these two equations. Figure 23.2. Um, in the figure evaluates these expressions for the, for the same value of lambda that we use for linear program, probing. Notice that the, the number of comparisons for an unsuccessful search grows with lambda more rapidly than for an uns, the successful search. While the degradation in performance as lambda increases is not as severe as a linear probing, you still want lambda to be less than 0.5 to maintain efficiency. So let's talk about the cost of separate chaining. With separate ch chaining as a collision resolution strategy, each element in the hashing table contains a reference to a chain of linked nodes. The number of such chains, including empty ones, is, is then the size of the hash table, thus the load factor lambda is the number of dictionary entries divided by the number of chains. That is, lambda is the average number of dictionary entries per chain. Since this number is an average, we expect some chains to contain fewer than lambda entries or, or even none, and some to have more. We assume that the chains are not sorted and that the search key in the dictionaries in the dictionary are distinct. The, the dictionary operations get value, remove, and add. Each require a search of the chain indicated by the search key. As was the case for open addressing, analyzing the efficiency of these searches is sufficient. Again, we will state that the number of comparisons necessary to, to, to locate a search key in the hash table in terms of a load factor lambda. An unsuccessful search of the hash table sometimes will encounter an empty chain. And so that operation is big O notation one. 
and would be the best case. But for the average case, when the chains are not sorted, searching for an entry in the hash table without success examines Lambda nodes. And in contrast, a successful search always inspects a change that is not empty. In addition to seeing that the table elements at the, the hash index does not contain null, an average successful search considers a chain of Lambda nodes and, and, and locates the desired entry after looking at Lambda over two of them. Thus, the average number of comparisons during the search when separate chains is, chaining is used is about Lambda for an unsuccessful search. One plus Lambda over two is for a successful search. So after evaluating these expressions for a few values of lambda, we get the results in figure 23.3. The number of comparisons for these searches increases only slightly as lambda increases, that is, as the hash table fills. A typical upper boundary for lambda is one. As smaller values do not provide significant better performance. Notice the unusual result. S successful searches take more time than unsuccessful searches when lambda is less than two. So what about maintaining the performance of hashing? Collisions and their resolutions typically cause the load factor um, the lambda to increase and, and the efficiency of the dictionary operations to decrease. To maintain efficiency, you should restrict the size of lambda as follows. Lambda less than 0.5 for open addressing and lambda less than one for separate chaining. Should the load factors exceed these boundaries, you, you must increase the size of the hash table. And we'll get into that and, um, as, as we progress here through this material. So let's compare schemes for collision resolutions. In previous segments, you saw how the load factor lambda um, affects the, the average number of comparisons re required by a search of a hash table for various ways to resolve collisions. The graph in figure 23.4 illustrates the effect for various collisions, collision resolution schemes. When lambda is less than 0.5, the average number of comparisons for a successful search is about the same regardless of the, the process used to resolve collisions. For unsuccessful searches, the, the three open addressing schemes have about the same efficiency when lambda is less than 0.5. However, separate chaining is sometimes more efficient in, in this case. So let's talk about a dictionary implementation that uses hashing. The efficiency of separate chaining makes it a desirable method for resolving collisions that occur during hashing. Because its implementation is relatively straightforward, we, we can um, leave it up to um, the interested party to, to explore the implementation. Instead, we will implement the linear probing method of open addressing. Most of, of the dictionary implementation is in, independent of the particular open address technique that one uses. Adapting it to quadratic probing or double hashing involves a few changes. So here is the, the listing um, in Java of the dictionary implementation that uses Java. And so here we have the private class um, table entry and, and it makes it internal to the um, dictionary class. Um, so here we have the, let's get into data fields and constructors. And so if you do not use a perfect hash function, you must expect collisions. All open addressing methods for resolving collisions become less efficient as a hash table fills as you need to increase the size of the table. As segment 2223 mentions, increasing the size of the table can also ensure that it contains a null entry and necessity for ending the, the search of a probe sequence. Since our hash table is an array, we can expand it and rehash the dictionary entries as described in segment 237. However, we modify the definition of the, definition of the load factor lambda by replacing a second by replacing the number of dictionary entries with the number of the table entries 
in either the occupied or unavailable states, thus changing, thus increasing lambda so that rehashing occurs before the table loses its last entry. Thus, the class begins as shown here uh, in this chart in listing 23.1. Here is the second part, and um, we'll just continue on. Let's talk about the, the methods get value, remove, and add. We now consider the major components of the dictionary get value, remove, and add. The, the, the note at the end of segment 2217 in the previous chapter summarizes what these operations need to do. The, for the get the method um, get value, we begin with an algorithm for retrieval, retrieval method get value, and we have that listed here. You can see that. Here is the method for, um, for get value. And so we see its implementation. And then the, the method remove, removing an entry from the hash table like retrieving an entry involves locating the search key. If found, the entry's location is flagged as available. The following pseudocode describes the necessary steps for, for this operation. You can see that in the chart. For the, the method add, for the previous methods, get value and remove, the probing step in the method get hash index looks in the hash table for a given search key. In doing so, it skips locations that contain either null or available. For the method add, the probing step performs a similar search, but it adds, but if adds gives search key is not already in the hash table, add needs the index of an unoccupied location in which to insert a new entry. As segment, segment 2217 in the previous chapter noted, this location should be as close to the beginning of the probe sequence as possible to, to, to speed subsequent searches for that entry. The following pseudocode for the method add assumes that the method get hash index handles these details. We have that here. Uh, we have the pseudocode. Um, and here we have the, the private method and large table. So for the private method enlarge table, recall that the method enlarge hash table expands the hash table to a size that is both prime and at least double its current size. Since the hash function depends on the size of the table, you cannot copy entries from the old array and put them in the same position in the new array. You need to apply the reverse hash function to position each entry properly in the new table but doing so can lead to collisions that need to be resolved. Thus, you should use the method add to add the existing entries to the, the new and larger hash table. Since add increments the, the data field number of entries, you must remember to set this field to, to zero before adding the, the entries. The method, um, so we, you can see the text for the, um, for the, the pseudocode and um, we have the, the Java code here in this chart. Okay, what about iterators? Finally, we provide iterators for the, the dictionary, much as we did in chapter 21. For example, we can implement an internal class um, key iterator to define an iterator iteration of the search keys. The iteration must traverse the hash table, ignoring cells that contain either null or available. Figure 23.5 shows a sample hash table. Cells in dark gray refer to the dictionary entries. Medium gray cells represent available locations from which entries were removed, and light gray cells contain null. As we traverse the table, we skip cells that are light gray or medium gray. The only real concern in, in this implementation is detecting when the iteration ends, that is, when the method has next should return false. The status of a cell and the size of a hash table are not the proper criteria for the determination. Instead, you simply count backward from current size. Each with the, the method next returns the, the next search key. And here, um, we have the implementation of um, key iterator, a class that defines an iteration of the value should have a similar implementation. 
So this is part one. We have part two, so I'll just skip over that. That's in the, the lecture notes here, or you can just pause the recording and see that. Um, in terms of the, the Java class libraries, there's two that we'll go over. This is the first one, the, the class um, hash map. The standard package Java util contains the class hash map KV. This class implements the interface on Java util .map that we mentioned in segment 2022 of chapter 20. Recall that the interface is similar to our dictionary interface. Um, HashMap assumes that the search key objects belong to a class that overrides the method hash code and, equ and equals. It, its hash table is a collection of buckets with each bucket able to contain a several entries. As you know, a hash table's load factor is lambda. A load factor lambda is a measure of how full the table is. The, the constructors for a hash map enable you to specify the number of buckets and the maximum load factor lambda max. The, these constructors are as follows. Um, public hash map, create an empty map dictionary with default initial capacity of 16 and then the default maximum load of factor of 0.75. Public hash map in initial capacity creates an empty map or dictionary with a given initial capacity and a default maximum load factor of 0.75. Public hash map in initial capacity float max fl load factor. It create, this creates an empty map with a given initial capacity and a given maximum load factor. Public hash map um, question mark extends K, question mark extends V map, creates a map with the same entries as map. The authors of hash map chose a default maximum load factor of 0.75 to provide a balance between time and memory requirements. Even though higher values of the load factor permit smaller hash tables, they cause, they cause higher search times, which in turn reduces the efficiency of the get, put, and remove methods. When the, the number of entries in the hash table exceeds lambda, um, um, max, the times the, the number of buckets, the size of the, the hash table is increased by, by using rehashing. But rehashing takes time. OK, so that's a quick summary um, on that one. And in terms of the, the class hash set, the, the package Java util of the Java class library also contains um, class hash set T. This class implements the interface Java util set that we presented in segment 122 of chapter one. Recall that a, a set is a collision that does not contain duplicate entries, but otherwise is similar to a bag. Hash set uses an instance of the class hash map as um, introduced in the previous segment to contain the entries in, um, in a set. Um, I won't go through the, the various constructors. I'll, I'll just list their, their name. It's those are the public hash set, public hash set int initial capacity, public hash set in, in initial capacity float um, load factor. Um, and so those are a couple of the things that you can be doing with that. And you can look those up in the, the Java class library documentation. Okay, with that, that, that will finish our lecture. Thank you very much.